If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining us on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future releases that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we are finishing up the TBM 850 tutorial guide. This is going to be part two. Um, if you guys have not seen part one, a link to it will be down in the description below or hopefully popping up on the screen right now. I highly recommend you watch that if you're interested in doing a full flight in the TBM 850, following all necessary checkbooks and checklists, etc. Even information coming out of the real world pilot's operational handbook. Um, that brings us to what today is all about, and that was my Overkill's TBM 850 tutorial guide for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Again, simulating a full flight, cold and dark, from San Francisco over to Las Vegas. Everything you need to fly this particular flight is inside of this guide, you guys. The uh, table of context or contents, which is a new development for me, is now also linked, so you can very quickly go to specific areas of operation that you're looking to get to. Um, I'm thinking later release, I'll also be adding a shortcut on each page back to the table of contents if you guys are interested in doing that. Obviously, that's going to take a lot of work. This is a uh, nine-day endeavor. It was the fastest I've ever cranked out a guide, just shy of 100 hours into this thing. Um, but uh, it was definitely a ton of fun to make. But again, takes you all the way from cold and dark to cold and dark. So if you guys are interested in supporting this guide or any other guides that I have created, this is guide number 10 for me. Please consider joining me on Patreon. Uh, tier 2 subscribers and above, so $10 a month or above, gives you access to all 10 of my guides and any updates that come along with them. The Longitude Guide was just updated last month. The TBM 930 Guide will be releasing this week, as well as another turboprop that will be releasing in about 8 days. Um, that guide will be coming out as well. So uh, I can't tell you what that one is yet, you guys, but I promise you're going to enjoy it. Very comparable to this aircraft we're staring at here. So let's go ahead and get rid or uh, get into the rest of the flight. All right, so to recap where we were on our previous video, we had gone through everything all the way through creating the flight plan. So our flight plan is all entered in. Again, going from San Francisco over to Las Vegas, we're going over the Stick 5 uh, departure. Uh, flying the Quebec 174 airway. Now, guys, remember that the GNS 530 does not, actually any of the GNS series that I'm aware of, do not support the entry of airways. So we had to enter those waypoints in manually that were associated with the Quebec 174. Uh, we're coming off the Quebec 174, joining the Cocktail 3 uh, Star, and then coming in on the ILS 26 left approach into Las Vegas. Um, hopefully it'll be a nice easy flight. Now we are using live weather today. Um, I am going to be sticking to the guide guys. So if I am dealing with tailwinds and things like that, uh, that is just in the interest of making sure that everything that I do in the sim today is done in the guide. So yes, we may experience some tailwind landings, tailwind takeoffs. If I do, forgive me. Um, it's just, again, in the interest of keeping the scenery cool and fun for you guys, as well as sticking to the step-by-step -step process that I have in the tutorial guide. If you're following the tutorial guide step-by-step, -step, if you guys have picked it up, I do recommend disabling live weather, going with clear skies, zero wind. That way you don't have to worry about that. It doesn't matter what runway you take off from or land in. You guys will be totally fine. Uh, the only catch there is obviously your altimeter pressure won't ever change. It'll be 299 or two across the board, um, but that's minor. So let's uh, do a quick recap here of what we've got going on. Our initial altitude is set of 10,000 feet. We don't have any restrictions on the departure today other than after 520 feet, we will turn direct towards stick. Um, but uh, that is the only restriction or only requirement we have to make. So we've set our initial altitude to 10,000 feet. We've got the altimeter set on both altimeters. Make sure you always do uh, left and right, you guys. Uh, transponder is set to on radios negligent uh, i'm not using any kind of atc today uh but stick around for another cool atc thing coming up guys you guys are gonna enjoy that um and then uh, we have already our ils frequency for las vegas pre-programmed in the gns did that all on her own pressurization is turned on we have our high bleed set or excuse me auto bleed set air conditioning set uh, cabin temperature is looking good all circuit breakers have been checked engines are already ready to roll we're, we're ready to lock and load so now we are at taxi 
Uh, flight directors are also turned on and we can lock in our altitude. So let's go ahead and start continuing on down. So now we are ready for taxi. We want to make sure that the GNS is set to GPS, which is, is here. Inertial separator is turned on, as you guys can see here for taxi. Weather radar needs to be set to standby or off. We'll go ahead and set to standby. Um, taxi light is on, ready to go there. And let's go ahead and release the parking brake, add a little bit of power. Quick brake check, brake checks are good. Releasing those brakes and bringing our nose around. The Las Vegas airport doesn't have a lot of really good general aviation parking for the default scenery. And I can't, <laughs> I can't remember which add-on scenery I purchased for Las Vegas. So right now we're just running or, or uh, San Francisco, excuse me, not Las Vegas. Um, so I can't remember. I know that there were two of them that I looked at and I can't remember what either one of them is, which is why at the moment we're using the default. So I do apologize for that. Okay, I couldn't remember if I put the flaps up after this. Obviously for this startup, I did this one pretty quick. So that way I could get started with the video for you guys. Now with this weather, the thing that you guys are going to be seeing that we don't have the guide or don't have in the guide is we will be using an inertial separator takeoff. So that'll be kind of cool at least to be something different that's not in the guide. So inertial separator is going to be required on takeoff. Anytime that uh, you have any kind of heavy precipitation or um, potential icing conditions or debris conditions. So we always use it on taxi. We always use it on landing. Um, and uh, we always use it in heavy precipitation or any kind of icing conditions. So um, I think we will go ahead and leave it on for takeoff, given the clouds are pretty ugly coming out of San Francisco today. Uh, let's go ahead and set our we go navigation. Let's go back to chapter one. That way we can monitor our ground speed very easily right there. Keeps things simple and easy. Now, according to the real world POH for the TBM 850, essentially the run up is done initially on line up. So you would line up to the runway or on center line of runway and do your run up. Um, that seems really odd to me. And especially if you're learning and you're playing multiplayer or live traffic, um, we want to make sure that we are avoiding that. So I'm going to be basically we'll use the hold short point as our run up location. I'm not using any kind of track IR or head tracking system today. And the reason being, again, is the idea behind this is a tutorial series. Um, I don't want the camera shaking, moving all about, you know, my head twitching, me sneezing, blowing chunks all over the keyboard and uh, you guys missing something because the camera got screwy. So uh, we'll be keeping everything very uh, straight camera today. So we're on our way taxing over to zero one left right now. Now, I did tell you guys that we would not be changing runways or anything like that because of the guide, but I should probably know what I'm in for. So let's bring up the METAR information. Ah, this is really weird while trying to taxi. What are our winds? 240 at 10 knots. Set our runway heading. So, truth be told, we should probably be taking off from the other direction. We are taking off with a 10 knot tailwind. So that's going to make things a little different, but it's all right. So the winds are basically coming from over there right now. So it's going to be a 10 knot crosswind at the tail. So that's going to make things a little weird. But like I said, I really want to follow all of the steps that are in the guide to the letter. Otherwise, it sort of defeats the purpose. Could change the weather pattern, reset all the wind, all that good jazz, but I promise it's not going to affect too much. The number of times I've ran this takeoff in the last few days. <laughs> oh, mercy, you guys. Uh, I am, I do apologize. I had, I did initially promise this two days prior to its release, so I, I missed my deadline by a little bit, but I was fighting, guys. I was fighting. Ran into a few issues with the GNS 530, a couple of weird bugs with the aircraft. Uh, nothing that was caused by the aircraft, just other mods and things like that causing problems there for a minute. Okay, so let's uh, let's start this. So now we're going to set our parking brake. 
caution is due to the parking brake being set. So first things up, terrain advisory system. Condition lever set to high. Now we're going to take our throttle and go to 1900 RPMs. There we go. Oh, went a little beyond. There is a slight delay in the power curve on the TBM 850, so be ready for that. Give it a second. Move your throttle and then wait a second. Otherwise, you'll find yourself doing what I just did. Okay, and then on the uh, propeller, lever control, propeller control, we're going to feather twice. It's nice and slow. You should notice a drop off between four and 500 RPMs. Run that twice. All right, and then we're going to run the TBM or 850 overspeed test, and that's this little black. So you see the 850 right there. There's a little button right in front of it. And we're going to press that, and we should see the RPMs drop between 50 and 100 RPMs. So we're just going to depress it. Okay, let go. It should come back. Throttle's back to idle. Pretty simple stuff. Fuel imbalance, we want to make sure that it's no greater than 15 gallons. Fuel select should be auto. Auxiliary boost pump set to auto. Flap should go to takeoff. We do not taxi with the flaps. Um... And uh, reason being is the flaps hang so low to the ground that there's a high probability of something being kicked up and shot up at the flap at the flap surface. So we always uh, taxi with flaps up, flaps come down right at the runway. Inertial separator, again, if it was clear skies, uh, we would disengage the inertial separator, but in this particular scenario, we'll go ahead and leave it on. Actually, no, let's stick to the guide. I think we'll be fine. It's Microsoft Flight Simulator. So we're gonna do that. And pedo and pedo and two install heaters turned on. Make sure the only enunciator now showing is the parking brake. We should be fine with the inertial separator. If we have to turn it on after takeoff, we will. But uh, that's only if we get below 10 degrees Celsius with the icing conditions. We're not actually in any precipitation yet, so who knows? We may be able to get out of it. We'll see what happens. Okay, so. Advisory panel, parking brake, inertial separator if actually on, engine gauges, make sure everything's in the green and looking good, temperatures are within limits, altimeter, or excuse me, amp meter, make sure it's below 50 amps, it is indeed. Transponder needs to be set to ALT for altitude reporting. Pulse lights come on, there they are. Landing lights come on, landing lights are required for the pulse lights. If you come outside, You guys can see the left and right wing doing the wig wags associating with these flashing uh, lights here. So, uh, that is where that is coming from. All right, transponder, as I said, elevator trim. Make sure that we're in the green. Just about 13 degrees seems to be working uh, pretty good for me in uh, all of my testing so far. And we will do parking brake released. Add some power and let's line up with the runway. And again, everything that I'm discussing is in the tutorial guide, page by page. Which brings us to our next segment here. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to determine our takeoff power in the TBM 850. Now, the TBM 850, it's actually really easy to determine and remember takeoff power. Takeoff power, anything from sea level up to 8,000 feet of field elevation. We're going to do torque at 100%, RPMs at 2,000. We're always going to rotate 85 knots. Recommended initial climb speed is going to be 130 knots. Recommended climb angle is going to be 7.5 degrees. Now, the TBM 850 has a... Let's talk about why it's called the 850. So first off, the TBM 850 is based on the TBM 700. TBM 700 was called the 700 because it has 700 horsepower. The 850 has, as you guessed it, 850 horsepower. But the 850 is not uh, certified for an 850 horsepower 
takeoff. So what happens if we have a torque limiter? Okay, the torque limiter is controlled by this little switch down here. This is actually the flap switch. And if we come all the way over here, you guys can see that the flaps go into the up position, okay? But they can also go one step further, and that's 850 mode. Now, we obviously don't want to be there, and we want to be back at takeoff. Make sure we get our 10 degrees of flaps back. Cool. 850 mode increase, reduce, or removes the torque limiter, allows us to go to the full maximum torque available of the aircraft, um, which sends it up to 850 horsepower. Now, the max allowable torque that you can use is 121.4%, which is essentially this red line right here on the torque indicator. Okay, now you're going to see this adjusting that quite often here. So after we take off, we are gear, we are wheels up, flaps up. Flaps we're going to be lifting up at about 115 knots today. Okay, increasing then our airspeed to 130 knots. After 130 knots, um, obviously wheels up as soon as we get positive rate. And I'll be walking through as we go through all of this stuff. Then once we are airframe is clean, the flaps must be confirmed fully retracted. And then we can engage 850 mode. Okay. Um, at which point you guys will see the torque increase to 121%. We'll continue our climb out at 130 knots. Uh, we'll be using both vertical speed and the uh, indicated airspeed. We'll probably just go IAS today. In the guide, I have the initial steps as using vertical speed, which can be determined here. So this screen here, this is our target altitude. This screen here, vertical speed control. You guys work just like any other vertical speed. Roll it one way, descends. Roll it one way, it um, ascends. Now, the TBM 8... 50 has a maximum climb or descent rate and vertical speed of 3,000 feet per minute. So anything beyond that, and you'd have to take control of the yoke and point the nose up or down. Uh, I wouldn't recommend going above that as it can't sustain that for very long, no matter which direction you're picking. So at this point, let's go ahead and we're going to start our takeoff roll. So let's do our pre-flight checks. Again, we are going to be departing at 100% torque. Now we were talking about the torque limiter. While we are in out of 850 mode, the torque will not exceed 100 knots. I still recommend using that more as a fail-safe. Advance your throttle slowly. Learn to set 100%. Don't rely on the torque limiter, okay? Get in the habit of learning where 100% is yourself. Um, 2,000 RPMs will rotate at 85 knots, then gear up at positive rate, flaps up at 115 knots, increase speed to 130 knots, climbing 7.5 degrees. Once we're stable in the climb, 850 mode will be engaged and uh, we will then go IAS. Remember at 520 feet, we will turn direct towards stick, which is our first waypoint, making sure that our nav and GPS are now set and we're ready to rock and roll. So let's do this. And we'll be climbing directly out at, once we are stable and autopilot is engaged, we'll be increasing our target altitude to flight level 290 today. Now, the other thing that we need to do is we need to set our pressurization. So um, I probably should have done this. Normally you would do this again. According to this, according to the uh, real world POH, this is actually done as you line up. Now, we are flying at uh, flight level 290 today, so 29,000 feet. Whenever you're setting your pressurization, you're going to set it for 1,000 feet higher than whatever your target is, okay? Um, the 11 o'clock position here is generally uh, pressure, pressurizing between 1,000 and 700 feet per minute. Rotating to the left will reduce the pressurization rate, which can be seen here. And then obviously rotating to, rotating to the right will increase Increase the pressurization rate. If for any reason the uh, pressurization system, and actually we are not in the right word, there we go, we want to be in auto. Apparently I flipped that a little too fast. If for any reason the AC system cannot keep the aircraft pressurized fast enough, you can turn the bleed to high, which will dedicate all pressure into um, pressurizing the aircraft, or all air sources into pressurizing the aircraft. Okay, I think we're good to go. That's enough talk on from me. Let's go ahead and get rocking and rolling. So, we have our weather radar. It needs to go to the on position now. There it is. Ooh, look at that. We even got some. Let's actually turn that, tilt that up just a little bit. You can see more of it's coming into play there. Looks pretty green. I think we're going to be okay. And we're going to climb out of it pretty quick. So, all right. I think we are good. Last step. We've already got our heading bug checked. Let's get out of here. So, advancing power, wheels off or brakes off. Uh, there was one other thing, sorry, that is a no-no. Let's turn these cabin lights down. There we go. Let's rock and roll. I probably didn't need to turn the instrument panel lights up, but I meant the cabin lights. That's all right. We'll be in daylight before you know it. Oof, oof, oof. This is that crosswind fighting me. This is what I get. This is what I get for using a tailwind takeoff like this. 
Alright, there's 100% on the torque. Airspeed alive. Remember, we are taking off with a tailwind. This is a no-no. There's 85 knots rotating. Good positive rate. Whoa, baby. Come back. Gear coming up. There's 115 knots. Flaps up. Hundred and thirty knots, I'm gonna use IAS. Autopilot yaw damper on. She actually kicked up to 140. We can adjust that in a minute. 850 mode on. There she is. Coming back down about 131 knots. So that works out well. Let's turn some of those instrument panel lights back on. There we go. I didn't mean to turn both of those off. Whoa, and we passed our 520 feet. My bad. So now we're going to turn direct to stick, which is cool. We didn't miss it, at least. Watching the weather radar. Nothing too nasty yet. Now that we're piling, flying, and screaming, let's go ahead and increase our altitude. It's at 20,000 feet for now. So the IAS is the easiest way to obviously get your speed on point, get your autopilot engaged, get the 850 mode turned on. It really is the best way to manage that. Um, like I said, in the guide, I have you guys use the vertical speed. It's a pain. It's hard. I'm not going to lie. What's our temperature still looking good? So we're not in any kind of icing condition. So I'm going to keep on rolling. Uh, let's see here. We should punch out of this. We still have no precipitation, or don't have any precipitation, I should say. Um, so yeah, uh, managing the climb through vertical speed is a pain in the butt, but I highly recommend you guys still practice it. Um, I show both modes. I show both methods here on how to do the takeoff, or how to set your speed with IIS, indicated airspeed with the autopilot, or vertical speed with the autopilot. So um, I used IIS today for the video. I used vertical speed in the guide, and then later switched to IIS. So let's see here. Let's see what we got going on now. So the climb. Let's make sure we go through our climb checklist. Make sure the cabin is pressurizing. It is pressurizing. ITT is below 840 degrees. RPMs are at 2,000. Let's go ahead and now increase to 121%. There it is. And the nice thing about this, you'll see our climb rate increase as the torque increases, obviously. NG can be no higher than 110%. Uh, ITT, no higher than 840 degrees. Engine oil or engine temp looks good. Oil temp looks good. We are right on point here. Fuel tank imbalance looks good. Fuel PSI on point. Turn and burning. We're coming out of the clouds. Looking beautiful. absolutely love this aircraft absolutely love it so it looks like we were fine the initial separator was never actually required we never got into any into any heavy precipitation punched through the clouds we never reached icing conditions outside temperature air temperature looks great we're at four degrees celsius now but we weren't there a minute ago and we're out of the clouds so we don't have to worry about the icing anyway all right internal temperature nice 72 degrees looking great all right so our next page here is where I talk about how to navigate through to the uh, nav mode also talking about 850 mode talking about the IAS setting that we just did looking gorgeous so we're just gonna sit tight pretty much all the way up until cruise 18,000 feet uh, we will turn off the pulse lights we can turn off our taxi light now. You can see that it automatically turns off when the gear raises, though, so that's a nice feature, too. 
10,000 feet, normally you would turn off the landing lights, right? Well, the problem is that we're using the pulse lights until transition altitude. The pulse lights are dependent on the landing lights, so the landing lights have to stay on until 18,000 feet. So that's where it's a little bit different from most aircraft, so keep that in mind. But on that, everything's looking absolutely wonderful. We're right on point, right where we should be. The aircraft's configured beautifully for the climb out. It's so now it's just a matter of sitting tight until we reach that altitude. Now, here's what's going to happen as we continue to climb. As we continue to climb, you're going to see two things. Actually, three things. First off, NG usage is probably going to increase because you're going to be adding power. Torque is going to be decreasing, as you guys can see, it's fallen off a little bit from when we first switched into 850 mode. So torque is going to be decreasing as we climb, which means you have to increase your power lever. So we're going to add some more power in. Oops, and I went too far. I like to keep it just below the red line. That way I have a minute. But as we continue to add more power in, your ITT is going to rise. So remember, you have a max of 840 degrees. You have a max of 110% on the NG. You have max of 2,000 RPMs, which the RPM should never change. Like I've, I've never had it in all of my experiences so far. Um, and the uh, a max of 121.4% torque in 850 mode. We have a master caution. Why do we have a master caution? Ah, so you guys saw that my torque increased over the 121.4% when I pumped the throttle forward. So that's why we have a master warning. We clear the master warning, come down here, hit enter, and it'll clear that. So there's our NG 100%. And we're looking good again. I oh, forgot to set COM2 as our listening. Everything else looking great. The other thing that I'll tell you guys about this aircraft. Uh, do make sure that you are following your checklist. Do make sure that you are actually testing all of your equipment on every single flight. As I have done so many flights in this thing now, um, especially the startup process, I've probably done the startup in this aircraft now, no joke, 40 times. Uh, it's been a lot. And um, one of the things that happened to me, ironically enough, yesterday on my last startup attempt before releasing the guide, the airframe de-ice failed. Um, I actually had to go to the weather radar. And speaking of weather radar, let's, I'm going to go ahead and tilt that down now. And I'm going to switch to the vertical profile. Okay. Um, but I had the airframe de-ice fail. Wouldn't, it wouldn't cycle. And so I found that to be actually pretty cool. I really did. So, um, and I had to go over to, so if you switch this to nav mode, you can repair the engine, refill oxygen, reset all failures. And I had to reset all the failures to get my airframe de-ice to work. Things will fail. So make sure that you guys are truly walking through your checklist on every flight or something's gonna get you. Now, it's not the end of the world. Obviously you flip this over like we just did. You hit your reset failures, but if you wanna live that full experience, this is the aircraft to do it in, that's for sure. Same thing with your circuit breakers. Make sure you're checking your circuit breaker panel on every flight. I have had twice, twice now, I've had a circuit breaker popped uh, when I went to do the startup. So. Luckily, I caught that both times. The uh, airframe was fun. I was glad that it happened. It's really given a genuine reason to make sure that you're following the checklist. So it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of work. This was, uh, this is one of the, this was a big one. Like I said, we got about a little over a hundred hours into creating this thing, guys. Um, more nights than not, I was up until two, three in the morning uh, working on this darn thing. So definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. And there's a lot more to come. So in the later releases of the guide, we will be um, adding the GTN 750. I went with the GNS 530 as I stated in the previous guide or in the previous tutorial. Um, I went with the GNS 530 because everybody has access to it. There was, there's no mod requirement. There's no paywall required. Uh, even with the working title add-ons, you don't have to worry about anything. So that's why we did that. Let's see here. And I have the Flight Sim Builder GNS 530 on, on uh, my cockpit here, so that makes it a ton of fun too. Really awesome, awesome avionics to have for your Flight Sim pit. Things like 280 US dollars, it's really not bad for all you get. It's got the display screen. The only reason why I don't pop out the display right now is because 
uh, OBS doesn't like it. So, <laughs> with OBS, that's all that you guys will see. Uh, oh, we are above our transition altitude. Let's go ahead and standard there. So transition altitude. Niner. Two. I think that's two. Okay. All right, and let's walk through our checklist for transition altitude. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. Flight level 2992, to press the standard button, landing lights, taxi lights, and pulse lights on. Are we icing? Or is that just weird glare? I don't see any icing. Look at that, though. That's pretty. Like, I, I have no problem saying it. That is beautiful. That's a neat shot. Looks like you can walk on it. Oh, hey, and it's time to increase our altitude again. So like here, we'll go into vertical speed mode. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use vertical speed to get our speed back down to 130 knots for our climb. And as soon as we hit 130, switch to IAS again. And it'll take over and adjust our vertical speed rate and continue our climb up to cruise. Easy peasy, man. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look up here again. You can see that once again, our torque has continued to drop. Okay, ITT 810 degrees now, and check a look at our NG. NG's coming up. So, we're going to come back up to 121%. Now, usually about 26,000 feet, you're going to lose the ability to reach the 121 without busting parameters. So there's the 20, 121 again. It's actually more like 120. Monitoring the NG percent, monitoring your uh, ITT. Again, max ITT comfortably is 840 degrees. All right, guys, so to show you again, now we're at 26,000 feet, and you can see, look how far our torque has dropped. Now watch our ITT here, and watch our um, NG. So I'm gonna try to hit that 121 again. I am now at max power, throttles full forward. The ITT, Coming up at 834 degrees. Remember, 840 is the max. 103 on the NG. And that's it. That's all she's going to give me is about 115% uh, torque. So, at this point, now we're just watching ITT. And at no point is it obviously worth damaging the engine uh, to try to maintain, you know, our speed. So, at this point, once we, uh, once that ITT hits 840, we'll be pulling power off. And we're going to be pulling power off here in a minute for the cruise anyway. But I just wanted to show you guys that when you, you can hit the max, like this is it. This is the best you're going to get at this point. So uh, at that point, it's just a matter of monitoring your ITT and making sure that you don't uh, do anything to hurt the motor. All right. So as we're approaching the cruise, let's start talking about power settings for cruise since we are now less than a thousand feet. So again, here's how this is going to work. For any altitude below flight level 250 or 25,000 feet, cruise power is going to be 121% torque at 2,000 RPMs. For 25,000 feet and above, um, now take that with a grain of salt, there's going to be some variance, but 25,000 feet, you're going to be 113% torque, which you can see is almost where we're at, at 2,000 RPMs. And for flight level 300 or 30,000 feet or above, you're going to be at torque 95% and 2,000 RPMs. 
Now, we're flying at flight level 290, or zero, so 29,000 feet. So in this particular situation, we're gonna go ahead and use the 95% cruise power. So as soon as we level out at uh, our cruise altitude, I'll go ahead and set the torque power down to 95%. We'll do that in just a minute here. So. And then we'll be walking through the cruise checklist as soon as we level out as well. it is so we're now at cruise so we're gonna pull our t cruise power in so there's our 95% torque and let's start walking through the cruise checklist so power levels have been power lever has been adjusted for performance fuel quantity and imbalance check everything is good de-icing as required no de-icing necessary other than the pedo heaters we're in clear skies no precipitation if we were in heavy precipitation, we would also need the ignition set to on, as well as the initial separator if required. But we're in nice clear skies, everything's golden up here, we don't have to worry about that. So, that's the uh, cruise checklist complete. Now let's go ahead and step on over and set in our information for our descent planning. So for the descent planning, we're gonna be using the VNAV and the GNS 530. Now it is not VNAV, VNAV it simply tells you when you need to descend and gives you an estimated, very close uh, descent rate. Now the descent profile for the TBM 930 is 2000 feet per minute at 230 knots. Okay, so we wanna get a close, as close to that as we can, uh, but it's important to remember that in the back of our mind. So let's do a couple of checks here. First off, things that we're gonna need. The ILS localizer is already programmed at 111.5 for runway 26 left over in Las Vegas. Final approach course is gonna be 259 degrees. Our final approach fix is gonna be RELIN at a required altitude of 3,800 feet. Our decision height is gonna be 2269. We'll be rounding that up to 2,300 feet. And then obviously 200 feet radar, but we're not gonna be using radar as long as we have clear visibility. Touchdown zone elevation, 2,000 feet, 2069 to be exact. And the initial approach fix of Prino, which is what we're using on our IAF, is 8,000 feet. Now, normally I would say we would set it our descent target to 8,000 feet being the initial approach fix. However, uh, we are still coming down through a star. The Cocktail 3 has its own flight restrictions that we need to be aware of. So let's go ahead and pop those up on the screen here for just a minute so you guys can see. So there it is there. And you can see here at Fletcher, we need to be above flight level 240, aerial at above flight level 210. The big one here that I'm gonna be using is cocktail. At cocktail, we need to be between flight level 190 and flight level 160. Okay, and the rest of them, you obviously have to make sure that you maintain the way down, above, 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 um, until we get to our join at Prino. Um, well, at Bourbon, we need to be at 8,000 feet and maintain that all the way to uh, Prino. Prino also, there's a requirement of 8,000 feet, and that's our approach. So what we're going to do is we're going to be setting, as we see here, we will set our initial requirement to flight level 1602 miles before cocktail to be sure we are in the restriction zone. So let's go ahead and see how we do that. So from the GNS 530, it's actually very easy to do. So we're just going to open this up, push the cursor to enable the editing. First thing, target altitude we know is 16,000 feet. We want to use the first... Um, Restriction. So our first restriction, we want to make sure we don't miss that. So it's going to be flight level 160. Okay, so there's that. We're going to press enter. Move on down. We want to do this two miles. Nope. Back to zero. Move over. There we go. Two miles before. We're going to hit enter. Roll over to the next one. And it, we want cocktail. There it is. Enter. Now. Notice the descent profile is wrong. So, we want that to be 2,000. Press enter, and there you go. Press the cursor to clear the editing, begin our descent in 43 minutes. So, that's all we have to worry about as far as the VNAV goes. Now, there's a lot of things that you guys can do prior to getting there. So, we're gonna walk through some of those steps. Now, these steps walk through the guide step-by-step um, step in the sequence that you would normally do that in, but we can save a bit of time here. So we've just set up our top of descent. 
Um, and actually, you know what? Never mind. We'll go through the guide step by step. So I'll tell you what, guys. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording here. And I'll see you guys a few minutes before our TOD. So we will leave that up and just continue to monitor. This is a position where having uh, both GNS 530s is awesome because then you can have the two flight plans up and running. And we just have to let it figure itself out and then we can go ahead and bring that screen up and be able to see what our route looks like. But from here, basically for the next 40 minutes, we're going to be sitting tight and waiting for, uh, waiting for our descent. So I'll catch you guys when we get to the top of descent. All right, so we are about three and a half minutes from our top of descent. Now, what's actually going to happen is at one minute, it will say descend to target. So you actually have about two and a half minutes. So we're going to walk through some of this here. We're, I'm going to read out the checklist and then we'll go through it. So first, cabin altitude set at field elevation. That'll be 2,100 feet. So we're just going to take it down to sea level, basically. Um, we're going to go pulse lights on, landing lights on as the pulse lights require them. Inertial separator as required. Airflow distributor, distributor as required. Fuel quantity and imbalance check. Auto fuel selector shift to the fullest tank. Set target altitude, flight level 160. And altimeter set once we reach the transition altitude. So the first thing that we're gonna do is select our target altitude, get that down to our 16,000 feet. Okay. Next thing we do is talk about the airflow distributor. It doesn't really model much here in um, Microsoft Flight Simulator, but this is the distributor. Okay, so essentially what would happen is defog would act as a windshield anti-ice or a defogger, but as we know, fog, fogged windows, etc., isn't particularly um, mo modeled well in Microsoft Flight Simulator, etc. So, don't really have to worry about that. Initial separator, not required. Um, anti-ice, not required. So we're all good there. Fuel quantity and imbalance check. So fuel quantity, we're again going to look for imbalance. It looks like the left tank is going to be the fullest. So right before we start to descend, we will shift down to the left tank um, as we always descend on the fullest tank. Okay. And let's see. Anything else that we are missing? The last thing will be the cabin altitude and the pulse lights, which we'll do right before. We can turn our landing lights on. That's fine now. So landing lights on, pulse lights on. And now we are simply waiting for 40 seconds to start that descent. So I'm going to come on down over here. Oop. <laughs> okay. All right, and let's set it for 2,200 feet. Now this thing stops at, so aircraft altitude is the inner knob, cabin altitude is the 2,000 feet, but we can go all the way down to sea level. No, wait, I have that wrong. Sorry, landing elevation. It needs to be cabin altitude. Cabin altitude we want right around 2,000 feet. 2,200, I guess, ish. Okay, and you can see it's already descending, and you can see that we've got our descend to target now. So at this point, we're gonna switch into vertical speed mode, and we are going to start that descent. So it's descending down at 2,000 feet per minute. Now, don't worry about hitting the 230 knots right away. That's not going to be very likely, but we can go ahead and increase power now to maximum. Again, watching temperatures, minding our NG. Remember to watch your um, altitude restrictions. So the first one that we're going to be concerned with, though, is at cocktail. Anything else, we're not going to come anywhere near it. So cocktail, we want to be at 16,000 feet, ideally. Now, as you hit the 230 knots, you can do IAS. However, um, remember that our goal is to hit the descent rate, not so much the speed. The speed is ideal if we can hit it, but the bigger kicker is the descent rate. If we were to go to 230 knots and then use a descent rate of, uh, or descent mode of IAS, you're not gonna descend at 2,000 feet per minute, which means you're gonna miss your target. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear that. And we've begun our descent, so we can actually come back here. And here you can see we're at aerial, and then cocktail's the big one. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot to shut the tank. 
I always do things like that when I am... Yep, now we're on the left tank. All right. I always forget to do things like that when I'm running through these, like, demos. Because, like, I talked about the checklist first. Then I started going through the things that we can do now. And then miss something. So, take learn from my mistakes. Don't do that. All right. Also, you want to be watching your VNAV page occasionally. You can see it's requiring 1,900 to hit our target. We're descending at 2,000. If this fluctuates, you need to adjust your vertical speed. The, bigger th the biggest thing is we must be at our altitude, or at least within the altitude range, of between 19,000 and 16,000 feet by the time we hit cocktail. So as long as you're going to make it there, this isn't as critical. But uh, make sure that you honor those restrictions. Okay, and then at Bourbon, um, which is the end of the star, we want to make sure that we are at 8,000 feet. We have a ways to wait for that, so it shouldn't be too big a deal. I'm going to adjust our time of day so we don't wind up in a night landing. Night landings are fun, not so great for tutorials. And then I'm going to use Navigraph charts today to get our METAR information. And it looks like they're running 29 or 62 today. At least at the moment. Your skies all the way into Las Vegas, though. That'll be nice. Now, one of the other things we can do here is after we pass aerial, is we'll go ahead and set our approach course uh, for the 259 degrees. I'm going to show you guys in just a second how to do that. Now, the bigger thing that you want to do before you do this is you want to make sure that you're on a long leg, that you've got plenty of time before the, uh, before the heading is going to change again. Okay? for that for just a second. All right, so now what we're going to do... Oh, we got a master caution. We went over our torque. Let's pull that back. It yelled at me again. I was busy looking at the guide. <laughs> let's pull that back in there. Well, and let's see here. We're right about 230 knots right there, so I'll actually pull the power up to maintain that. Okay, so let's walk through this quickly. Setting our approach course. So we're going to align our heading mode. Go into heading mode on the nav system. Switch our CDI over to the localizer. Set our course for the localizer of 259 degrees. That way it's nice and set when we get there. Oop, too far. There we go. That's all we need to do. CDI, back to GPS, nav mode on again. That's it. Now that'll be ready when it comes time to switch over to the localizer. We also need to set our decision height, so we can go ahead and do that now as well. And I missed my page. So we're going to come down here and up here on the FS panel. We're going to move down to DH set. You can see the decision height comes up over here. And set our decision height. And that's going to be 2300 feet. So. Twenty two sixty nine, so we'd actually do twenty two seventy if we really wanted to be on the money. There we go. We can do that instead. I have it twenty three hundred in the guide, either one will work fine. Thirty foot difference isn't gonna make that big of a deal, so whichever one you choose. And you see that the decision height disappears, that is normal. It will return when we get into the approach. We have our altimeter we need to set now. Which they are, we said 29 or 62. And we need to set that over here as well. This one's a lot harder to see. Should be 
it okay and there's flight level 160 we need to wait till we pass cocktail but what we can do is set our next target down to 8,000 feet set our vertical speed and as soon as we pass cocktail we can continue our descent now we still need to manage the rest of the descent our next waypoint we need to be above 12,000 so there we go we've cleared it Let's start our descent down again and I'm just going to do about 1,500 feet per minute this time. See it well? No, let's go 2,000. We've only got 10 miles. 10 miles to the next waypoint. Watching our airspeed, I'm going to pull some power back. You're definitely busy in the 850. A lot busier than the 930 with the glass cockpits and everything being controlled. And I love it. I have flown this aircraft so many times now, and every time I fly it now, I'm still picking up something new. Biggest thing is on the descent, managing your descent uh, altitude restrictions. And again, those are listed in the guide, so if you guys follow this flight plan exactly, uh, all the information you need to monitor that is in there. Uh, but the bigger thing here is that uh, you want to make sure that if you need to stop the descent, you stop the descent. So that's, that's the kicker there. So actually at Zelda, uh-oh, we already broke it. Sorry, Zelda was 14,000. The next one's 12,000. So we're just going to level off here until we pass Zelda. Watching that airspeed. Increasing power to maintain for now. It's close to it. Caught it early that time, at least. So the next one, Dion is 12,000 and NV is 11,000. But you gotta do what you gotta do. So you gotta monitor that. Zero out your descent rate when necessary. Almost time for the next turn. Alright, she starts turning, I start descending. So we're going to descend at 1,500 feet per minute this time. Only got 16 miles and about uh, 1,500 feet to go, so it should be fine. Approach configuration is all done. We have ILS set at 111.5. Our decision height is set at 2270. We have our localizer course of 259 degrees locked in. So that's set. Then as we exit the uh, stars, we get closer to Bourbon, we will come out of 850 mode. Start configuring the aircraft for landing as soon as we make the approach on the Prino. Alright, we're going to start slowing our descent. Notice that we are at 12,150 feet already and we still have 10 miles to go on this leg. So. I also let it accelerate much, much, much too fast. Just going to hold 12,000 until we pass through uh, Dion, and then we'll descend again to um, 11,000. It's definitely a lot to monitor and talk about at the same time, um, and I think that's one of the hardest. That was one of the more difficult parts about creating this particular guide. And the flight plan had a lot to do with that, too. Uh, was that it's a much busier aircraft during the transition phases of flight, right? From descent to approach, or even from cruise to descent, descent to approach, approach to uh, landing, and then vice versa, you know, from the, all the way from takeoff. The takeoff is a really busy section. 
would recommend reading that first before you execute it. Um, the descent isn't as bad. Um, you have plenty of time, obviously, to look through it, set up your VNAV, things like that. You know, you've got about, I mean, you guys saw we have 40, anywhere from 40 to 50 minutes of cruise, depending on when you hit your cruise altitude. Um, the approach and landings, um, I recommend pausing the sim between each phase, reading through the guide, and then uh, uh, executing step by step. That's a nice thing. You are in simulation, so it makes it very easy to simply pause the sim, do some reading, get back after it, right? So I do recommend that. I definitely do. Um, and you'll have a much smoother time if you read through everything first and then get an idea of what to expect and then walk through the pages also as you're going through it. And you shouldn't miss anything. It should be smooth. All right. So once again, passing through Dion. So let's go ahead and increase our descent rate once again. I'm going to use 1,500 feet. This seems to work really well. And you can use 2,000 feet. You can use the descent profile if you choose. Um, obviously, as long as you stop the aircraft by time, it's time to stop it. Stop the descent. You're fine. Like this one's going to be pretty good. I think we're going to be right on point. I'm watching our power this time, making sure I stay under that 230 knots. There's 11,300, 11,200. Start leveling that out a little bit. Let's go to 800. Even if it's just for a second, I want to try to hit my altitude targets. There's the switch over. Now I'm going to continue down at 2,000 feet per minute, all the way down to 8,000, where we will maintain. Now, if this goes as it has been going, when it comes time to make the turn onto the approach for Prino, we're going to be slightly below the glide slope, is what usually tends to happen. With um, and that's because we descend a bit faster than what the approach is looking for, and that's totally fine. Um, all right, so we're at 10,000 feet. So what we're going to do now, or our next phase, I should say, what to expect for you guys, is as we pass the manual sequence, so we're going to pass bourbon that exits the star. Then the manual sequence essentially is a location where either manual vectors would be put in, you fly a visual approach, whatever it may be. But usually this is where ATC would steer you onto the approach. Since we're not using ATC today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fly a perpendicular course um, to our target. I'll show you guys what that looks like here in just a minute when it comes time. Once we make this last turn here, ah, uh, we got a couple yet actually. All right, it's coming up on 8,000 feet. You can see the 1,000 foot warning light is uh, illuminated, so the aircraft's going to level out here. Now, as we come down to the 8,000 feet, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start pulling power off. Okay, I'm going to make sure that we start slowing the aircraft down to 180 knots. Now, we can do this right now. We're at our level altitude. This is where we're going to stay. So it's up to you guys when you initiate these particular next phases. But I know that I'm not descending any further until I reach my uh, approach fix. So I'm going to go ahead and start doing some of this now. First off, you have to come out of 850 mode. So in order to do that, you must be below 100% torque. Okay, now I'm also slowing the aircraft down to 180 knots. Reason being, at 178 knots, you can come down to takeoff flaps and the gear can come down. So it's just a good setup, good starting point again while you're learning the aircraft. When you become more comfortable, you can shorten that distance can start really taking advantage of, of your knowledge and comfort with the aircraft and really start pushing those boundaries a bit more. Okay, um, let me see if I can find better. Oh, it's all suck. The only thing I don't like about the GNS 530 is decluttering it is a pain. Uh, you can zoom out quite a ways and that will start to declutter it, but it's just not the same. Um, anyway, so we're coming up on Red Quinn. So now that we are below um, the 100%, I'm going to take us out of 850 mode. Okay, so now we are once again limited to 100% torque. I'm going to go ahead and leave the aircraft. We'll go ahead and run at 100%. But at least I know that stage is complete. The idea behind the reason why I set it up and I mentioned things like this isn't necessarily that that's procedure. The idea is if you're learning the aircraft for the first time in the simulator, give yourself time. That is the beautiful part about it being a simulator is you have time. Um, so 
set yourself up comfortably, get used to the actions, and then try to play Maverick and, and be the badass and, and, you know, dropping everything in those last few minutes and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you know, looking like the showboat. But while you're learning, take your time. Set things up early that aren't going to impact. The only thing that us setting our speed at 180 knots right now does, or the disabling uh, 850 mode does, is slows the aircraft down a little bit, makes the flight just a little bit longer. But we're talking coming down from 220 knots to about 200 knots where we're sitting here right now at 100% torque. So it's not crucial, right? All right, so we are now coming off of bourbon. We're going to go to the manual sequence here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to engage heading mode. So let's center our heading bug. And this is all in the guide, all these steps. I'm going to enable heading mode, and I'm going to continue on this path. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fly until Prino is basically perpendicular uh, to the aircraft. Okay? Once it's a beam the aircraft, once we're beam it, then we will turn due north. Once we get close, you know, we'll turn due north, and actually it's right about the time it's completing the turn. Then we'll activate the approach mode. You'll see the pathing complete. If you try to do it from here, you have a 50-50 shot of it working. I don't recommend that. There is a limit to when the aircraft will actually make the turn onto the approach. If you're too far off one direction or the other, I don't know what the degree limitation is for the GNS 530 or the GNS avionics. Um, but there are certain aircraft, for example, I believe it's a 10 or 15 degree offset, uh, the aircraft won't complete the turn. You have to steer it manually, come within those ranges, and then turn it. Um, so what I like to do is I will manually turn it towards Prino. As long as you're turned towards Prino, you're fine. We can engage, we can activate the approach, and the aircraft will fly the remaining path. Once we are turned onto the final approach course, um, we are going to also start our descent down to 3,200 feet, which we can go ahead and set right now. That is our missed approach altitude. So if we have to call it missed approach, we go um, full power, take off flaps, escape to 3,200 feet, and then rejoin the transition, or rejoin the approach. Okay, so we've got our approach altitude set. So what's going to happen now is once we hit Prino, we're going to start our descent rate once again. Okay, uh, once we start descending again, uh, we'll be watching uh, for the localizer. You can see the localizer is actually already acquired. So once we turn on to the final approach course, I usually wait till Lari here, and then we will uh, activate the approach mode. We should see the glide slope populate on the uh, EHSI. It'll also turn green for the localizer because we'll turn into localizer mode. Um, you guys will see all of this, and then if we are below the glide slope, I will zero out the descent rate, let the aircraft be in approach mode as the glide slope comes down to the aircraft's altitude. Basically, as we meet the glide slope, the autopilot will take over and continue. So, that's where we're at right now. So, we've got a couple minutes left until the turn, and we'll be good to go. I do recommend while you're learning, wait to pass it again. As you get more and more comfortable, get more and more familiar with the approach, then you can be a hot shot. But as you're learning the aircraft, getting comfortable maneuvering around it, go to the initial approach fix. Because we could have used, for example, we could have used bold here. We would have been able to come up here and turn onto lorry directly. There's a couple different ways that we could have done this. I picked this one for time. I want us to have time to comfortably execute. Now I'm going to go ahead and start slowing the aircraft down to that 180 knots we talked about. There's our passing point. So now I'm going to turn us due north. So watching that heading for 360 degrees. I'm going to come over here, go to the menu. Oh, sorry. I don't want the menu. I want procedures. And we're going to go down to activate approach. Enter. There it is right there. You guys can now see it. I'm going to stay in the heading mode until we basically turn onto the final course. And I'm going to wait until we reach Prino before I actually start that descent we talked about. But now that we're turning due north, I'm going to go ahead and go into nav mode. The GPS should continue to steer us on to Prino. And there she goes. Now you can see we're 3.7 miles. Prino has an 8,000 foot requirement, so once we get to Prino, Start to the descent. 
Let's see, we're at 180 knots there. It's a cakewalk, you guys. It's a cakewalk. And all of these steps are included in the guide. I made sure not to leave any of this out so there weren't any hiccup points. Down to 170 knots down. Give us again more time. All right, we're at 1.7 miles. There's the vertical speed reset just by giving it one little click. Now 1.2 miles. And we're going to descend to 1,500 feet per minute. Point three miles. Let's go ahead and start. There's that 1,500 feet coming in. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. There we go. Goodness gracious, what happened there? There we go. Settle down. Settle down. All right, and now the next thing we're doing is change our CDI over to the localizer. Now that we're on, there's our glide slope. You guys can see we are slightly below it. So I am going to arm the approach mode, and I'm going to zero out our descent rate. This is critical. You must zero out the descent rate or vertical speed will maintain. So we're on the approach mode. Now let's go ahead and watch it. Watch our vertical speed as we capture it. And there's the vertical speed. We're now on the glide slope. Everything is golden. The aircraft's taken over from here. So now to bring us all the way down to the runway. Easy stuff, right? Now one of the things I do like to do is we get below 10,000 feet within inside the approach range is I'll hit my B key. Just to hit, yeah, see the altimeter changed pretty significantly there again. Okay, can't always rely on the live weather that we get even from Navigraph. Uh, it doesn't always match up with the sim, but that's okay. That's why we do these things. All right, so we are coming up on the landing checklist. So let's start looking at things. Cabin lights are off. Altimeters are set to local decision height we have set. Fuel quantity imbalance is less than 15 gallons. De-icing as required. Inertial separator on below 200 knots. Go ahead and flip it on. Watch your torque. That's going to drop as you do that. You're gonna start losing airspeed. Now that works out because we're gonna be dropping some airspeed anyway. RPM lever is set to max. Let's set our gear to down and flaps to the takeoff position. Okay, so gear's coming down, flaps at takeoff. Landing lights on, taxi light on since the gear is down. And there is the landing checklist. Now, the uh, master caution was due to the inertial separator coming on. No big deal. Make sure our missed approach is set. Looking good so far. Now, your autopilot disconnect button here. When it comes time, basically when we reach our decision height, we will press this button once. It will disconnect the autopilot, give us full control. You also want to make sure you come up and turn the yaw damper off for landing. About 20 to 30 feet, you will flare the aircraft 5 to 7 degrees shortly before the runway. We're going to set our power level to idle. Remember that the TBM has a slight delay in that power curve. So as you pull the power lever back, it's going to take a little bit, a couple seconds, before you actually see, start seeing that torque roll back. So the idea behind it, and I have not mastered it, guys. Every landing that I do, I float. Um, so just bear with me on that. Be ready for that. I admit it full-heartedly, but the process is there. Okay, so the process is, as I previously explained, Okay, um, and then we'll use gentle wheel brakes as the wheels come down. Um, you shouldn't need reverse thrust, but if you're landing on a short runway, obviously once your all three wheels are down, gently depress the brakes and pull the uh, throttle back into the reverse thrust if necessary. We won't need the reverse thrust today. We've got a very long runway, plenty of space to go by, so it shouldn't be an issue. Whoa, what was that? I'm not even touching anything, man. What's our time of day looking like here? Getting dark again. I want to keep it nice and bright for you guys, so that way there's no... Nothing gets... Nothing gets hidden in the shadows. We'll just let it ride on in through the rest of the descent here.
good news is we are landing into the wind. We've got winds at 23014, gusting at 24 knots. Holy crap. to do this part a little early too because you will notice some changes in behavior of the aircraft so we're going to pull ourselves back to below we're now in radar altimeter range so we're going to pull ourselves below 120 knots at 120 knots we can go full flaps and then set the approach speed for um, 85 knots if you're really light you can come in at 80 knots there it is full flaps coming in Verified. Set our heading bug to the two five nine degrees. Probably should have gone the other way, but it gives us something to do while we're flying in, right? Approach speed's looking good, fluctuating a little bit, nothing crazy. God, I really went the wrong way, holy crap. <laughs> Here we go. Cross from me just kicking the crap out of the tail. Holy crap. We are crabbing. Let's look at this. Look at that, dude. time getting in there man should be interesting when it comes time to disengage the autopilot almost at decision height Mercy. Just that airspeed fluctuating a little bit. That wind gust is killer, dude. plane. Yo, yaw damper off. There we go. Okay. I forgot to bind the uh, yaw damper to my OTAS. It's twice I've done that. All right, easy. Easy. Wow. All Throttles at idle. Want that right side to come down first. Nah, I want the right side. Yo! No center line for me, but we got everything else there. 
Ooh. Nice thing about the 850, she requires almost no runway. <laughs> Damn. That was a that was the biggest crosswind I've landed this aircraft in yet. That was crazy. And again, we landed into the wind. We did what we were supposed to do. Alright. So that's landing complete. Let's get off the runway. Gosh, come on, man. Getting kicked all around. And let's stop. Hindsight, I should have selected runway 26 right, but that's alright. Okay, so we're going to stop the aircraft, and we want to make sure that all de-icing is turned off. That includes the pedo uh, and stall heaters. Inertial separator remains on until we complete the taxi. Make sure that the um, bleed switch is set to auto. Weather radar gets turned off. Landing lights are off. Pulse lights are off. Strobe lights, there's debate. I've seen multiple videos and I have to agree with a couple of them um, in that since there is no beacon light on the aircraft, we're leaving the strobe light on. That's how I do, but according to the checklist, strobe light comes off, so it's up to you guys. Uh, oxygen switch also gets turned off here. Transponder goes back to the on position instead of altitude reporting. And from here, we will taxi to our gate. Or parking ramp, I should say. All right, so we've reached our gate. Shutdown's pretty simple. We're going to go parking brake set and verify the enunciator shows the parking brake. Okay, and taxi lights off. Nav and strobe lights off. Bleed air off. Air conditioner off. Cabin, verify it is depressurized. Stop needle here. Fan flow can stay in auto. Power lever needs to be idle for one minute. Gyros need to go to the off position. FS master can be turned off. Radio master off. Autopilot trim system off. Propeller, we're going to feather it for 15 seconds. Okay, and auxiliary boost pumps, or auxiliary boost pumps, cut off lever, damn it, goes to off. Okay, now auxiliary boost pumps go to off. Fuel selector goes to manual. Now, fuel tank selector needs to go to off. Now, how you do that is you just left click it, pops out, and then rotate it down. Okay, all external lights should be off now. Ignition should be off. Source selector, off. Generator stays main, crash bar down, which brings the generator down anyway. And then for the fun part, open your doors. Open your cargo doors. Wrong one. Let your passengers out. Oh! I did not move my lever. The after taxi checklist had to take the flaps up. And I thought I did. I did not. So after landing is what it was. So what we can do, we'll just come up here, bring source and main back up, and bring the flaps up. That was a fail, so that's the after landing checklist. It is in there to bring the flaps up. I just missed it. And then bring the crash lever back down. And there she is. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. I hope you guys consider supporting me on Patreon. I really do appreciate everything that you guys do for me, whether you are a subscriber or not. All of the support and all the love that I get on this channel means the absolute world to me. I hope you guys found this useful and I hope you can use it in your future flights. As always, folks, stay safe and healthy and enjoy the TBM 850 from Black Square. Take care, guys.